Thanks for tuning in again to the Traveler's Frontier Multiversal Series Podcast. I'm your host, Othello Gooden Jr., a.k.a. J.G. Traveler. Hmm. So the Hilladegas think that the space-time continuum is theirs and theirs alone. Then you have the Goodmans trying to clean up their mess. Now, there's a new challenger entering the fray. Dr. Frankenstein is now in the building! And in the Reloyalverse, his name is Eric Lunningham. Let's take a look at his resume. And yes, it is very extensive. Before founding Project Gene, Dr. Lunningham was head of the science division at Evanston LLC. Does that company ring a bell? It should, because this company's CEO is none other than the famous Connor Evans. Everson LLC first started off as a tech firm. Then, their inventions started to revolutionize their way of life. One of their biggest successes was the invention of anti-gravity. Even though there isn't any gravity in space, with the research done on the Heavy Ion Collider, thanks to Everson LLC, now people can walk on the ground in an outer space living environment. That same tech could produce some very destructive results if weaponized. One such project that could do that was the Gravity Wielder, a suit of armor developed and tested true to its name by Dr. Eric Lunningham. So what can the Gravity Wielder do? I'll let their spokesperson, Michelle Pune, tell you. The Gravity Wielder, codenamed Angeline, is a prototype battle armor designed by Connor and Michelle Evanston with the assistance of Dr. Eric Lunningham and John Falcoon. It has the ability to manipulate magnetic fields using the body's energy. Embedded in the suit are nano-sized sensors that store heat given off from the body during activity. This is then converted into electrical energy and stored in the kinetic force field emulator. In the joints of the gravity wielder are sensor nodes that are wired to the KFE, serving as access points in creating the energy field around the user. Activating the force field requires a hand or arm motion. These are programmable by the unique code within the KFE software. The barrier is designed to reflect energy-based weaponry and deflect solid projectiles including, but not limited to, bullets and arrows. Melee attackers will be knocked away from the field with an electric shock. Though the KFE can store an unlimited amount of energy, the capacity and usage requirements are limited by the human body. In conjunction with the Gravity Wielder is Evanston Space, or ES, a prototype system granting the user the ability to create realistic holographic weaponry. To call a weapon from the database, the user performs hand signs. Upon a correct entry, the weapon materializes in the designated hand. Be mindful that a single hand sign cannot be shared in the creation of a different weapon. All weapons are stored within the ES database and can be updated via firewire using a computer. Nations on Earth had their own version of the powered armor. Most, if not all of them, combined man with machine. Still, they were vastly outclassed by the gravity wielder. That's what you call Relorian ingenuity at work. Dr. Lunningham holds two doctorates, one in cybernetic, the other in genetics. Unfortunately, his studies in genetics would put him on the Queen's radar. What if I told you that nanotechnology was what Dr. Lunningham used to create all of his genetic projects? Enter Project Gene. Through Project Gene, Dr. Lunningham became the father of all alien races in the Reloyaverse. The first alien race created by the Mad Doctor himself was called the Genesse. In French, that's Genesis or Origin. Notable members of this race include Avansar, the Chimeran Assassin, and Axonine, the Axe-Tail Komodo Dragon. However, in cyberspace, Axonine is a three-headed Chimera with nine tails. At the end of each tail is an axe. It's interesting to note that this version of Axonine is ever-evolving. In the near future, it evolves into a being known as Miles Security. In Latin, that name translates to the Axe Soldier. In this form, Miles poses a big threat to cyberspace. It will take the combined efforts of 2K Returner, Lady Cyan, and the Quantum Initiative to take him out. The next alien race to be created was called the Zephyrin. 
They were the smartest of Lunningham's creation. The Sapphiren were a humanoid plant race. However, that wasn't their most distinguishing feature. The Sapphiren had a hive mind. Individually, the Sapphiren mind was very powerful. Those mutants in the X-Men universe, the strongest of Sapphiren can best even an Omega level one. Those, unfortunately, are far and few. And they only come out when there is a big problem. One of them being 2K's daughter. So where are the Zephyrans? Well, mankind wouldn't know. Even if they did, that memory, the Zephyrans would erase from their minds. And if they try to start trouble in numbers, the Zephyrans would just have the government put them all in jail or in a sane asylum and have them labeled all as crazy. But this still leads back to the question about Area 51, or more specifically, E.T. In the Reloyaverse, Area 51, it's just another top secret TTA base. Let's just say, in one timeline, the Sapphire controlled everything. But thanks to TTA, they no longer have a foothold on Earth. So they can stay on Mars where they're at currently. As long as they don't attack Earth, they gooch. In the Splinter timeline where the Sapphire ruled everything, a juggernaut class spaceship known as Lanehart Omega was constructed. It was so big, it could eclipse the sun. And its firepower was so massive, in an alternate timeline, it decimated the Earth and Lunar Society simultaneously. It would be safe to say that Lanehart Omega is Lunningham's base of operations. Here's a bombshell for you. There is this united terrorist organization on Earth called the Global Union of Benevolence, aka the Goo. Their leader is Jean Falcon. Their foot soldiers are the Lanehart. You guessed it. They were developed by the Mad Doctor himself, and you will find them in abundance on Lanehart Omega. Compared to the Lanarian Society's Relorian Armed Mechs, the Lanehart class still were vastly superior. How many Relorian Armored Mechs does it take to get a job done? Too many to count. How many Lanehards does it take to get the same job done? Only one. When they step onto the battlefield, get ready for body control. Lanehart Omega is like a world within itself. On this spaceship were several races, but I'm going to mention the most prominent of them. The next to be born after the Zephyr were the Zerui. To the average human, the Zerui are the same, but biologically, they're different. Not only can the Zerui hit harder, because of this, they are better, faster, and stronger. There is, however, a splinter race that are technically rebels called the Rayon, but that's all there is to them. Yet rivaling the Zerui are the next. You could say that Dr. Lunningham took the best parts of the Zephyrin and the Zerui and put them in the Nexus. No pun intended or not. Nah. I'm not saying it was a pun intended, but it was most definitely a pun intended. If you haven't guessed it by now, the Nexus displayed superpower traits just like their predecessors. However, an individual Nexus had a wide variety of powers. This trait was vastly different from the Zerui and the Zephyrin. Both of the aforementioned races had a collective power that race was known for. In a unique sort of way, the Nexus were vastly superior. You could say that they were so versatile. After the Nexus came the Echinoquis. At first sight, the Echinoquis were blind to the bat, and they were very sensitive to light. But don't let these aforementioned disabilities fool you. They can hear you from a mile away. And if you engage them in a swimming contest, they'll dust you faster than a dolphin. Last but not least, the Anomaly. The Anomaly's most distinguishing trait is their purple skin. In the Reloyaverse, also in ours, there is a substance called dark matter. Some people regard it as the glue of the universe. Dr. Lunningham used dark matter in the Anomaly. Dark matter and the anomaly made them impervious to mental intrusion. It's also interesting to know that if this same substance is injected into anyone else, they may or may not get the same powers that the anomaly have. There's a 50-50% chance that you may or may not die. However, in the unique case of Celeste Goodman, 2K Returner's daughter, dark matter can augment what's already there, if not grant new abilities. Now let's go back to the current timeline. We know that Dr. Lunningham, with his Project Gene, creates much mischief throughout the space-time continuum. During the First Siren Civil War, the Jeunesse helped Dr. Lunningham escape the Queen's wrath. Unfortunately, the Jeunesse did not extend the same privilege to his former colleagues. Well, maybe Jean Falcon, because he still keeps in touch with him. 
then there are some turncoats within Yumo. The person of interest is known as Ivan Emanuel, aka Master Wonga, or alternately known as the Crazy Man himself. But I tell you, Dr. Lunningham is more crazier than him. How can you abandon your friends to the Queen? Well, he believes he didn't have a choice. Okay, fair enough, especially considering the fact that the Queen came after him first. Why? Why did they come after Dr. Frankenstein? I would say it's because of his ideals and what he could create. So where does that leave the rest of Edison LLC? Find out next time when we return. If you like this podcast and want to hear more, subscribe to it. That way you will be notified when the next episode is posted. If you want to check out my other works on the net, look me up on YouTube under 2K Returner for all you gamers and Quantum Filmations for all my non-video game related content. If you'd like to support me as a content creator, check out my Patreon at patreon.com backslash jgtraveler. Becoming a patron gives you a variety of perks, one of them being giving you early access to any project I work on, dibs on blog topics, and more. I thank you all again for tuning in, and as we go our separate ways, take care and be safe. Till we meet again, travelers.